Animal Crossing New Leaf isn't your typical game, as you can probably already tell. The entire experience revolves around living a leisurely life in a village full of anthropomorphic animals, where your only goals are what you choose them to be. Pretty weird, right? Basically, Animal Crossing New Leaf is barely a game at all. There are no mandatory objectives, you can't beat it, and you certainly can't lose at it either. Everything just is. And for that reason, this isn't going to be your typical review. Even though we've been playing it for almost a month, there's still a lot we haven't seen. And that's because the game actually plays out in real time. So the town's stores all open and close on a regular schedule, different insects come and go at varying points throughout the day, and if you play in the evening, you can even catch the sunset. Hell, the seasons even change, and there are different holidays and activities throughout the year. What I'm getting at is that just one month of playtime is a mere drop in the bucket for a game that never officially ends. And while it's unlikely many will play it forever, I don't think I'm anywhere close to my personal ending point. Really? Animal Crossing New Leaf is an experience that evolves by the day and is meant to be played leisurely. It's not intended to be an experience that you might grind through in order to meet a deadline. Instead, it's all about the long haul, and I simply haven't experienced enough of it to give any kind of final verdict. And for that reason, this review can and will only speak to my first few weeks of the game, and I won't be giving out a final score. At least not right now, but I do intend to revisit this review in the future with at least one more part that will. Okay, hopefully I haven't put you to sleep with my boring explanation. Let's get to the review. Now, New Leaf is far from my first Animal Crossing game. I was completely hooked on the GameCube version back in 2003 for months, and its real-time casual style of gameplay was something I had never experienced before. And when the sequel, Wild World, came to the Nintendo DS, I found myself hooked all over again. But only for a few weeks before I completely burned out on what was largely an identical experience. And I skipped the Wii version entirely, because I simply had no interest in doing the exact same thing again. But when Nintendo announced that they would actually be introducing some new elements in New Leaf, like the ability to be the town's mayor, it seemed like just a shot in the arm that the series needed. Plus it had finally been long enough since my last Animal Crossing experience that I was ready to try it again. So how's the first few weeks of life been in my personal town of GXville? I'd say pretty good, but with a few reservations. Where else can you go fishing, bug hunting, swimming, and digging for fossils all within just minutes of each other? And then there's a level of freedom that empowers you to make all kinds of choices, such as whether to donate things you find to the criminally underfunded museum, or sell them for cash, which you can then use to splurge on items for your house or help fund projects around town. And it's actually these projects that lend the game a potentially more structured feel than past Animal Crossing games, if you choose to play that way, that is. Because you are mayor, there's a giant list of proposed projects that you can choose from to actually build in the town. And these projects serve as carrots to keep it coming back for more as you watch your town grow and develop over time. It really does add to the addictive nature of the gameplay. Now as cool as most of the projects are, I should make it clear that those projects are mostly superficial in nature and don't lend any real sense of change to your town. And this is perhaps the most disappointing aspect of the game. Even though you are a mayor, you really don't have that much actual influence. And that's partly due to the inherent nature of the laid back gameplay. This isn't SimCity after all, so there really isn't that much for you to influence. But at least the changes you can make do certainly help make the town feel more your own, especially compared to past games. But even then, I can't help but wish the game went even further. Because after visiting several other players' towns online, they all start to feel the same. I mean, they all resemble the same basic layout, which is a square, with most major landmarks like beaches, train stations, and the town center always being in the same place. And speaking of online, I found the game's use of it to be fairly unremarkable. Yeah, you can now visit random players' towns using the new Dream Suite option, but you can't interact with them in any permanent or meaningful way, which kind of makes the whole thing feel kind of hollow. But you can still interact with your friends' towns, as long as they're online at the same time. And believe it or not, the game is actually a step back from the previous Animal Crossing games in that you can no longer send letters to other people's towns, which is just silly in a game like this. Hell, even the GameCube version allowed you to send presents to other towns, and that game wasn't even online. Really, in the year 2013, it's hard not to be disappointed when New Leaf offers very little in terms of social interaction, and is actually a step back in some ways. But I should mention that there is now an in-game instant messaging option, but it's kind of clunky and feels tacked on, as there's no contextual reason for why you're able to talk to someone miles and miles away. But despite my disappointment with the game's lack of ambition, I am still having a good time. There's been enough news so far that's kept me engaged longer than the DS version did, and there's still plenty more for me to see. And although none of the individual activities are really that fun, there's something oddly compelling about the world when taken as a whole. With all that said, it hasn't come close to capturing the magic that I felt with the original GameCube version, which was just such a unique and fresh experience at the time. But if you haven't played any previous Animal Crossing games before, you might very well experience that same magical feeling I did all those years ago. Though conversely, if you've tried playing a previous game in the series before and couldn't get into it, I doubt there's anything here that'll change your mind. And if you, like me, burned out on the series previously, this might just be the one that can re-engage you. But remember, I'm only a few weeks since, so there's still a lot more for me to see and play. So I'll be back with a more complete review in the future. Maybe a whole year from now, who knows? Thanks for watching, and make sure to stay tuned to GameExplained.com for more reviews and other things gaming too.